Bias lighting is something I've wanted to do for years, ever since I first saw the Philips Ambulite TVs back in 2017. And whilst there is software out there to do it, I could never seem to find the hardware required for my setup at a reasonable price. Until recently when I was browsing Amazon to find parts for this project like I occasionally do, and I finally found a capture card that could fit all of my needs and seem to tick all of the boxes, meaning I could finally get started on the DIY Ambulite project. I'm gonna show you how exactly I did it in this video for around 75 pounds. Before we get started, I do want to mention that this isn't a full in-depth tutorial like we normally do, but more of an overview of the entire project and how I did it for my exact setup. You will definitely be able to follow along and see what I did and replicate it for yourself, but we're not exactly gonna go deep into the weeds on this one. If there's enough interest, we can definitely do a full in-depth tutorial. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below if that'd be something you're interested in. And uh, whilst you're down there, you may as well hit that like button and get subscribed if you aren't already. Before we get into the setup, it's worth talking about how the Ambilight or Bias Lighting project works and also the exact hardware I used for my setup. And it's actually pretty simple. Essentially, there is an addressable RGB strip that goes all the way around the backside of the TV. And this is being controlled by a Raspberry Pi running some software called Hyperion. And Hyperion is an open source project that I first heard about back in 2018, I think. And essentially, it's the brains of the operation. It takes the image that is being currently displayed on the TV, analyzes it, figures out all the colors, and then controls the LED strip in response to that on-screen image. It runs on a Raspberry Pi, like I mentioned, um, it's very customizable and it's also pretty easy to set up. You can run it on any Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B, but I'm planning to move to a Raspberry Pi 0W very shortly. You're probably wondering how the Raspberry Pi gets its image from the TV. And that's by using a capture card to intercept the source media. And this is definitely the piece of the puzzle that put me off doing this project for the longest time. We consume pretty much all of our content on Netflix or Amazon or or YouTube or Plex at 4K HDR. And so finding a capture card that can do 4K HDR pass-through as well as HDZP 2.2 at a reasonable price was very important to me. And I could never seem to find one that ticked all of those boxes. It wasn't actually the 4K HDR that was the hardest to find, it was the HDCP 2.2. Because without this, any content from Netflix or Amazon will just display a black screen. But then I finally found this capture card on Amazon that ticked all of those boxes. It's a bit more expensive at $59.99, but if 4K HDR isn't important to you, which I know it isn't for a lot of you guys, then you can definitely find ones that will do this exact job for less than half of the price of this one. I'll have the links for everything you need in the description down below as always. The LED strip I used was the classic WS2812B, which runs at five volts. And this is ideal for pairing with the Pi, which also runs at five volts meaning I can use one power supply to power both the Pi and the LED strip and I don't need to do any voltage step down. The LED strip I have is the 60 LEDs per meter, which I think is the sweet spot between looks and also power consumption. Finally, I grabbed a five volt, eight amp power supply with barrel jack connector, some female barrel jack connectors with screw terminals and a tiny bit of wiring. I'm using roughly four meters of LEDs on the back of this 50 inch TV. And according to the calculations, I would need roughly 14 to 15 amps of power. However, the only thing I could get my hands on at the time was this eight amp power supply. And I've seen some indication from some other YouTubers that are much smarter than me in this area that you can actually get away with less. So I decided to give it a go and I haven't had any issues since, but just make sure to research your power supply and your power requirements before you buy your power supply. The first step was to install the LED strip around the frame of the TV. And I tried to get these as close to the edge as possible for the best look. At the corners, instead of cutting and soldering like is the proper thing to do, I just kind of folded them over themselves like this. I decided to start and end my LED strips right in the middle of the bottom of the TV because this lined up nicely with where I wanted to place the rest of my components. I then used some command hook strips 
to stick down my capture card and also my Raspberry Pi. Yes, I Velcroed a Raspberry Pi to the back of my TV. Don't worry, it's just temporary. I then plugged my Chromecast into the HDMI input of my capture card and I took the HDMI output and plugged that into the HDMI port of my TV. I then wired the USB port of the capture card to the USB port of the Raspberry Pi. With everything in place, it was time to wire everything up. I say that like it was a big task, it was five wires. I started by taking a micro USB cable and cutting it in half, exposing the five volts and ground wires, which are the red and black wires. This allows me to power the Pi via the micro USB port instead of the GPIO pins. You can do either, but the advantage of the micro USB port is that it has over voltage protection built in, whereas the GPIO pins do not. I connected the plus and minus wires from the micro USB cable into the screw terminals of the barrel jack connector along with the plus and minus wires from the LED strip. You'll notice I'm using a common ground wire here, meaning that the ground from the LED strip and also the Pi are connected to the same place. This is very important, otherwise you'll get a Caesar inducing flicker from the LED strip. Finally, I connected the data wire of the LED strip, which is the green wire, to GPIO 18 of the Raspberry Pi. With everything wired up, I then inserted my SD card into the Raspberry Pi that had already been flashed with Hyperbian, which is essentially Raspberry Pi OS with Hyperion installed. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. If you have something running on your Pi already, you can simply install Hyperion from your package manager. With the SD card inserted, I then plugged in my power supply and let the Raspberry Pi boot up. After a minute or two, I was able to find the IP address of my Pi on the network and log into the web UI located on port 8090. After that, it was a simple case of telling Hyperion a few things like what LED strip I was using, how many LEDs I had, what position they were in, and the orientation, and then enabling my capture card. After that, I loaded up some content and it was off to the races. At first I was a little underwhelmed by the reaction speed, which was a little bit slower than I'd hoped for, although I am very sensitive to this. But after playing with some of the capture card settings, I was able to get a much nicer and smoother experience. The key one for me was actually lowering the capture card resolution from 1080p down to 720p. After all, all the capture card needs to see is the colors. It doesn't actually need a good quality image. It just needs to be able to see the colors in order to change the LEDs. Lowering the resolution of the capture card does not impact on the image that you're actually getting on the TV. And the end result is actually something I'm very happy with. I actually find it does add to the movie watching experience, which I was actually um, a little bit surprised about. I didn't expect it to add much to the experience, but yeah, overall very happy with the image. I actually think it comes off more distracting on camera than it does in real life. In real life, you get used to it very quickly. Um, and yeah, it does provide a very nice movie watching experience. And the nice thing is that it's very customizable. You can completely turn off the LEDs for certain types of content if you don't want it. And you can also set the LEDs to be different effects or you can even set it to a constant back color instead of changing with the image. You can just have a constant LED color up on there if you want to maybe reduce some of the strain on your eyes. One of the best things about it is you can add it into Home Assistant using a local integration and that allows you to completely control how it works um, using automations or from the dashboard. But there we go, that's how I built a bias lighting system for around £75. And you can definitely do this for much cheaper if you use a 1080p capture card instead of 4K HDR. If 4K HDR isn't important to you, then just use a 1080p one and the price will be much lower. Um, if you want to add multiple sources into the system, so if you want to have an Xbox and a Fire Stick and a Chromecast and a Blu-ray player all feeding into the um, Ambilight system, then you can use a HDMI splitter and that will allow you to have all of the sources available in Hyperion. I'll leave links to all the exact hardware I used 
as well as some other sensible hardware recommendations in the description down below that you can check out. And if you decide to buy it, it will help to support the channel at no additional cost to you. But that's about all the time we have for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know, what do you guys think about this project? I'm personally very glad I got around to ticking this one off the list. So let me know if you plan on making one in the comments down below. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on buying the hardware to make these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. Your support is very much appreciate it. Oh, and let me know if you want me to do a full tutorial or full in-depth guide on this um, DIY bias lighting project. Uh, we can definitely do a, a more in-depth video um, if you guys want to see it. So do let me know in the comments box down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, make sure to drop it a like and hit the subscribe button if you aren't already. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Whew.